this fascination begin? See, my mom met my dad, and uh oh, no, it was uh, I've been sick all my life, I think, and it's Ooh. just I found a way to let out the sickness, and rock and roll is a perfect way to do it. Yeah. Uh, if I get to be Mr. Hyde every night, then that means I'm Dr. Jekyll during the day, you know. Uh, if this was Alice here right now, he'd have already been chasing you around with an axe, you know. But luckily I've got Kane here to protect no, me. No, Kane would have been holding you. Oh. <laughs> What's he like to work with? Uh, it's it's tell pretty good. Tell me the good. truth. Come on. Tell me okay, the truth. Okay, it's so hard. It's a, it's a job for me. I just do it because I have to. Uh, <laughs> Pack no, his no. lunch every morning. No, it's, it really is. It's a great thing. I mean, and, and fortunately we have a few things in common. Just the priorities are different. I mean, I make no bones about the fact that I hit my microphone when I talk. And uh, I also, I, uh, I write about sex and violence, and Alice writes about violence and sex, so we, ha we kind of have a common ground. <laughs> we find our, we, we kind of come together somewhere in the middle there, you know. That's a, a lovely, lovely story. What we're going to do is we're going to play uh, Guns N' Roses for you, because yeah. I understand they're big, you're big fans of that. Axel yeah. and the boys. And Axel we also and have Motorhead. Now, Motorhead's out with us now. Yeah. I understand. Now, tell me, what's it like working with Lemmy? This guy is, is I think, as notorious as you are, but he's, for different reasons. He's definitely, they're the loudest band I've ever heard in my life. I mean, they are, they are almost as loud as the Partridge family, you think? <laughs> Danny Bonaduce really kind of Danny changed my louder. life. Yeah. No, they are the loudest band I think I've ever heard in my life, and they're really great guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they go out nice there, guys. they go out there every night with the same attitude that we do, and that's to totally, totally wipe the audience out. Annihilate the ears. Annihilate them. Yeah. And uh, they do a good job of it. We're happy to have them with Real us. Real rock proud of, We're proud of the boys. That's yeah. great. All right, and we're going to start things off with uh, a track from, from you. Yes. Teenage Frankenstein. Is it Teenage Frankenstein? Or great. Yeah. Freedom. I think we're going to play Teenage Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Teenage Frankenstein's yeah. great. Yeah. We'll, we'll play Freedom after. Okay, guys, stick around because we've got a lot more with these guys. We're going to talk about gore, splatter, and blood. So, <laughs> hey, stick around. But right so now, make some lunch and come on back. <laughs> Alice Cooper, the Pepsi Power Hour. Eric, I'm here. Shut up. Jeez. Alice Cooper and Kane Roberts. Kane Roberts. Okay, babes. Um, you uh, ran pretty Is fast on the other here? show. <laughs> no, it's your imagination. Have you noticed that? I thought maybe it was just me. We did this just for Patrick's. Come I like on. This. this is very good. This reminds me. It's nice. <laughs> you have a pet snake. Is this is this the uh, snake that you use on stage yours, or is it is it a prop, or is it actually your pet that you keep at home with your family? No, actually, we rent them in every city that we go to. Really? We go to a uh, Hertz Rent a Snake. Yeah. No, of course, they're ours. Yeah. Do you keep them at home with your children? And uh, I keep them at. Uh, actually, we have a, a one guy that takes care of them in L.A. And <laughs> this is just like the stage show, only I wouldn't be able to see you. Uh, uh, yeah, the snake is sort of like we do it for a, a different uh, snake for each show, you know, for each like tour. So like we retire them after after the last year's show, we, we retired them. Well, it must be a very. Those are your fans, by the way. It must be a very traumatic experience for the. Uh, yeah, must be a very traumatic experience for the poor snake being on stage with you. And no, the snakes are great. They're deaf. All snakes are deaf. And so are all lead guitar players. Obviously, yeah, I think most of the snakes are dead after he has sex with them. I think that's what happens. <laughs> that's disgusting. That's no, they're cheap dates, though. You don't have to buy one nylon. Oh, he stole it. That's I gave it to him for free. You must do this an awful lot, this like no, back and wow. forth. Who knows? Pay the man, Lou. Talk, hey, right. talk about splatter films. I know that you're into them. I, I personally cannot bear to watch them. They give me nightmares, which I don't enjoy. Do you get inspired by these films? I, I uh, use them as research, really. I mean, I've actually seen splatter movies that have used things from Alice Cooper shows. Like what? And so, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'd be watching one, and all of a sudden they'll they'll do something that we've done on stage. They do a guillotine bit, or they'll do a thing that that's directly the way that we did it. Huh. You know, or, or they'll use a style thing, some sort of a, a dress thing that we've used. You know, and uh, in fact, in Prince of Darkness, uh, the the thing I did in Prince of Darkness, where I put the bicycle through the guy's chest. Right. John, yeah. John Carpenter saw us do that on stage with a mic stand, and he wanted to know if we could use that in the movie, huh. you know, only with a different prop. So I mean, it does influence back and forth. Well, it's not that surprising because when Stephen King was here, he was here about a year ago on Much Music, and he was talking. Is it smoke too much for you? No, he I'm was inhaling it. I okay, like good. it. Okay, good. And he was talking about um, rock and roll. Now he is one of your, you know, perfect horror writers. Oh, he's great. And he's totally into rock and roll. He 
Bangor has his own radio station in really? Bangor, Maine. Yeah. And did you help open it with him? Uh, no, but I mean, I'm sure he plays our, our music up there. Yeah. Uh, I I truly respect Stephen King and Clive Barker and those people mm. like that because uh, I mean they are really the they are really the the, the word today. You know, uh, the 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 way the movies are, the way the books are coming out, and the way that rock is right now. There's a real marriage between all those those three things. And I think the most important thing though is like for people to have fun with it. They shouldn't take it seriously. They should never take an Alice Cooper show any further than what it really is. The theatrics of it's it. It's a theatrical show and it's um, it's rehearsed like that. We rehearse it for months doing all the hanging and doing the things like that. Um, we're not there to to invoke violence or we're not there for any religious reasons at all. We're there because everybody wants to come and have a, a party with Alice. And when they come to my parties, they're very sick parties. <laughs> so everybody should be aware of that. Yeah. You know, uh, It doesn't go any further than that. We're not trying to indoctrinate anybody into anything. Let me ask you something. You watch a lot of these splatter movies and the yeah. gore movies, and, and the, the whole stage show that you have is, is with the blood and the killing and the... Gallons you know. of blood. Let me ask you, what intrigues people? What intrigues someone like yourself and your fans? What what intrigues someone by the blood? What is it in, in, in human nature that is so enthralled We're by animals. Blood? We're all animals. We're, have you ever driven by a car wreck and tried to look that way when the car wreck's over here? I mean, not you. But, I mean, you know, you're driving by and you see a car wreck. It's impossible not to drive by and see who got splattered in the car wreck. It's human nature, and it also has a lot to do with sensationalism. I mean, uh, I believe in giving an audience uh, a show that they're going to be able to talk about the next day, maybe maybe for the next 10 years. <laughs> they're going to say, you can't believe what they did. You know, he did this, and I, oh, I thought I was going to get sick, and then he did that, but it was cool. Everybody, said, they always say, but it was cool. <laughs> you know, and that's the way I look at it. it yeah. It's meant to be cool. All right. Yeah. Speaking of cool, we've got Aerosmith coming up. Now, old buddies of ours, so they're great I guys. I assume that, yeah. yeah. And both of you, both both you personally and yourself, both have cleaned up your acts. You're not drinking, not doing any more drugs, yeah. and that sort of thing. Same thing with the guys from Aerosmith. Now, there seems to be a, a whole new trend in rock and roll music to just get away from the whole drugs. Well, he went from doing uh, drinking to making an entire world sick. Yeah, that was the way I, I like, kind of made up for it. Plan, yeah. and, and so I'm not going to drink. I'm going to make everybody vomit with my stage show. So and and Kane cannot kick the X Lax habit. Oh yeah, yeah, right. It's something yeah. that he has to have well, before every show, or right. your we show have in Aerosmith particular. Coming up, and Cinderella, you asked for that video as yeah, well. Yeah, good. These these guys are all all really ro real rockers. Joe Perry's really happening. Yeah. Joe Perry and and Steve and the guys are really old friends of ours, and all these bands are, are pals. It's all like right. a fraternity. Perfect. Yeah. Cinderella. More with Alice Cooper and Kane right after this. Four of my co-hosts are Kane Roberts, Alice Cooper. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. How come they never had me do a Pepsi commercial? Don't you think I do a great Pepsi commercial? Well, I would, I would guess that they want to have a very squeaky clean image, and the blood, the blood could could be confused with Pepsi, perhaps. We don't want to, you know, liquid. Yeah, I guess you know, so. it's got to so. be separate. But I mean, you know, like. After a hard day of slaughtering things on stage, I always get a little dry, and I like Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Why Diet Pepsi? Because it tastes so good. Hey, look, we'll, we'll send this to our sponsors. You never know. That I was think, beautiful. You did uh, that beautifully. I think I did that very well. You acted in The Prince of Darkness. Yes. Do you have any other plans to um, scare everybody on a big screen? Well, Disney's not exactly knocking my door down. But, well, they're uh, changing their image. Yeah, right? but not quite enough. Uh, uh, we get a lot of uh, scripts in the mail, a lot of things that they want us to do, you know, uh, they want us, Kane and I, to write a lot of music for a lot of the Splatter movies, you know, we did we did uh, Friday the 13th Part 6 and, and, and Prince of Darkness, but I think the thing with acting is it kind of seduces you away from rock and roll. Mm -hmm. If you say you're going to do a film, it, you're talking five months where you're not going to be out on the road, you're not going to be in the studio. You're going to be like in a stu you know, doing a film. But sometimes it may be a much needed break to get away from the tedium of rock and roll and you want to do something different and if, change your mind. If mindset. I had a luxury of having six months off somewhere, I would consider doing a film. W what I would also consider thinking that you would be good at is to write your own disgusting, horrible, gore splatter flick. We did that. It was called Sound of Music. But somebody else had already done it, so <laughs> we just kind of let it Have go. Have you ever had that idea? To we sort of actually, Kane and I wrote something called Scarebox, and it was really scary.
scary. And then we went and saw Hellraiser by uh, Clive, Clive Barker. Barker, and it was the same story. So we said, well, somebody's already done that. But I mean, it was basically the same story. So we had to start all over. So uh, we're actually writing something right now. Scare boudoir. It's a little bit there. Yes. <laughs> It's about I, bloody lingerie. You keep on talking about women, and what I find very interesting is that yeah. is that uh, most right. bands, most metal bands now have the you know the chick in the in the virtually no clothes and right. you know the whole sex thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what what you're smiling, but yet you don't seem to do that. You seem to have more class than that, and you seem to to uh, maybe insinuate it, but it's not so blatant. You have a bit more subtlety, perhaps. That's yeah. only because of during rehearsals they all get killed and they never make it to the real. <laughs> video <laughs> like you said I write more about I think sensationalism and sex where he writes more about sex and violence you know uh, so I capitalize I think more on uh, on the action of it the, of the, the you know the violence and everything like that more clockwork orange I think mm -hmm. whereas Kane you know is, is much more hustler magazine yeah. attitude no yeah no, Let me show your album. I just, just, we're going to play his video a little later on. Let me show. Are you the Ra the Rambo of rock and roll? That's what everybody keeps telling me. So I guess I am turning into that somehow. Is that good? I, it doesn't matter. I like it. It's a good thing. I guess the gun and the physique and the hair and the left leg. The left, no. The left, <laughs> right leg. The yeah, right leg is more Rambo. Yeah. yeah. How much, how much have you learned from this guy? Well, quite a bit. I mean, uh, I was playing uh, 18, and, and it was really upsetting uh, my relatives and my parents and stuff And, and when I was a kid. And then uh, suddenly here I am rearranging the music a little bit and, and getting on stage with him. And he has a tremendous presence on stage. And he, he gives me some of these presents once in a while, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> and we, uh, we have a good time. I mean, it's really a great thing. Okay. All right. Do you ever tell about the scar right here? On your, it's a <laughs> well, one night my legs were running faster than my brain, and I ran across the stage. And Alice kind of swung his sword around and cut me over the eye. And as the blood came down, I said, "This is good for my image." <laughs> and then. As it got down about here, I went to the front of the stage, and then I tasted my own blood, and I think that was probably uh, a good moment for That's me. That's beautiful. Yes, That's it was beautiful. a very romantic, sentimental <laughs> moment that will live forever. Yeah. In Super his romance. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like great. it. Yeah. Do you ever have trouble getting your stuff across borders? You know, I think that they probably are very stunned. With, with they, you know, when they look through the stuff and they see like bodies and parts of you know arms and legs and severed things. And they probably think it's some sort of like, uh, you know, it must be for a film or something. And then they realize it's Al it says Alice Cooper on the box, and it's it's and okay. Say, then. Oh yeah. No, they like us. They like us here at the border because they know that we're very nice boys, and we wouldn't hurt anybody that bad. <coughs> okay, uh, let's see what we're gonna play. Faster Pussycat. You have a story about these guys? Yeah, they're old pals of ours. They were been on tour with us in the beginning of this tour, and they're great. They're really a good street LA band. And you've been there. Yes. I saw you there. The Cat House. I I saw you at the cat yeah, house. Tammy, Tammy. Those, those, the only thing I didn't like about those guys is they took some of the women before we got to them. So. They're cute boys. They are. They, they are rough. cute boys. Not anymore. <laughs> Ain't pretty no more. Ain't pretty no more. You, you know? And what else we have? Uh, Easy O. You guys requested this? Yeah, Easy O, boy. A flashback heart attack. What a song. That's a great band. I can't wait for their next album. Good right. good looking group. All right. They got the makeup happening. Well, you know, they had to learn from... You're going to learn. Learn from the best. <laughs> you know? Here we go. Some more metal on the Pepsi Power Hour. Much music. In a couple of albums, we have Alice Cooper's Raise Your Fist and Yell, and also Kane Roberts' album, both autographed by both the gentlemen here, guys, men, whatever, gentlemen, what the heck. But um, Alice has the uh, the way in which you can win. Oh, absolutely. Right into that camera right I'd there, right into that camera right good. there, since I'm here. You have to name at least one of my snakes. I had names for at least, we had seven snakes, and they all had names. And you should know those names. They should be etched into your memory or at least tattooed on your arm. Okay, and if you know the names of those, one of those eight or seven, seven. snakes, then you address your postcard or your envelope or whatever to Alice Cooper, care of the Pepsi Power Hour, Much Music, 299 Queen Street West, Toronto, Ontario, M5V2Z5. And again, we have ten copies of these, these to give away. And we also have these um, these T-shirts, which we're not going to give away just yet. What we're going to do is entice people to keep on watching. And on an upcoming Pepsi Power Hour, we will yeah. give these away. All right? So you got to stay tuned to Much Music in order to win. Okay? That's right. You, what's your latest name?
snake's name? Do we haven't named the new snake yet. Oh, well, how do you name a snake? What do you? What? We, we just stare at it. it. We just like whatever comes to us. Like if it, like if we're on the tour and something happens where we know that's the, supposed to be the name of the snake, then that will be the name of the snake. <laughs> so far, the don't say. Okay, I won't. <laughs> okay, I won't. You almost gave it away. It was so close. <laughs> I keep saying we should name it Ginger because that's the name of the blonde that I picked up in the video, and she was she's really nice. Blonde, I picked up in the video. She was that the blonde? Really I picked up in the it must video. Have been the blonde in the video. video. <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna play uh, the video "Freedom" from your Muse Fist and Yell. Now we this haven't is, seen this, that yet. This have is we? like a message song, which is something different from it's Alice an Cooper. It's an anthem. It's an anthem, you know, and it's. I think it's sort of like a. They wanted me to have dinner with Tipper Gore, of all things. Who they wanted, wanted you? They, you know, they always said, "Well, you want to, you know, debate with her." Do you wanna, and I said, "I don't want to do anything with her." I said, I, "What I'd like to do, I'll just." If she wants to read the lyrics to Freedom, that's my whole statement to to her about the PMRC. So you don't have the PMRC here. Well, we have ripplings of them here. They're not, you know, it's it's still everything that yeah. happens in America sort of happens well, here in they, Canada. Well, they start out with the premise that all kids are created stupid, you know, and like I don't, I think it's cool to act stupid, but the kids are not stupid out there, and. Uh, and I mean, you know, she she's kind of like seeing witches and devils everywhere. This girl is, you know, and uh, she's a great publicist, is what she is. She's she actually pretty good at what she does. Yeah. Well, let me just play devil's advocate for one second. Devil. Devil. Oh, she gets in trouble. Yeah. If you did she that. gets us here and she assumes. Can it's rock and roll ever go too far? I think yes, can go too far. There are limits to what we do on stage. I mean, we don't do anything religious on stage. We don't touch anything religiously on stage. Or and we try to stay away from politics. I hate politics in rock. I think politics takes the fun out of rock. Uh, even though I understand the bands like you too and uh, and him too. <laughs> oh, well nice. you know something uh, uh, they have something to say. He know? wants nothing to do with Tipper Gore. See I I would think a night with Tipper Gore and Fawn Hall would really be something that I'm might looking be for. An interesting idea. If she ever would call me, both of them. <laughs> and would you like to invite Together, him? Yes, I'm inviting Tipper Gore and Fawn Hall to my house and uh, bring now, a Tipper's lot of married, ointment. I'm sorry. Was it? Tipper's married, and I think you should respect that. Who, Al? Are your Al. kids, you've got a couple of kids, are they rock and roll kids? Absolutely. They, yeah? They watch videos all day, all <laughs> night, and uh, and I'm a hero to them because Daddy gets up on stage and goes, Yeah! And they go. Do they come to your shows? Absolutely. That's great. Absolutely. That's great. I thank you very much for coming here. Hey. You're going to be touring all across Canada. All across Canada. There's no way you can get out of it now. We're in your country. With and Motorhead. we're like a bad disease now. And uh, You're going to be with Motorhead. Are you going to be with any other band or just Motorhead and yourselves? I don't know. I think just Motorhead. I, I think, think that's, Motorhead. That's Lemmy's enough. I think that's yeah. enough. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, yeah. All right. Don't bring your earplugs. It's got to be loud. Don't bring your parents. <laughs> Bring, bring your parent home. Plugs. Okay, so thank you're, you very much. What are you guys going to be doing now for the next few days until your tour starts? We're, Not do, we're doing interviews tomorrow. Oh, no. He'll be at the strip clubs all night. Yes. Tonight. If anybody knows of a good strip club, please call it in and you can find me there. Yeah. <coughs> Is that it? Are we finished now? Yeah, you yes. know what? What? You'd be a good drummer. Well, I, See? I, I dabble. Okay, thank you. Yeah, she's like, right. she's this is the sexiest Cooper, um, woman I've ever sat in front of for 45 minutes and not touched. Thank you. Unbelievable. Videos. Alice Cooper. You're making me embarrassed.